we are putting Windows inside of Linux. And this is often done incorrectly. Sometimes you run up a VM and you're like, oh, this is so laggy. Why is, why is it not working right? And, and never think that virtual machines are inferior. If anything, the world runs on virtual machines. You don't walk into a data center and see a bunch of uh, operating systems running on bare metal. <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to even find one that does. So why is it when we're on our personal computers, we're not utilizing VMs properly? And some of that's just the setup. So let's walk through the setup, get your VM, or basically your Windows instance looking like this. This is how I record all my system videos. When I'm doing stuff for Windows, it's in here. You'll see my start menu, not laggy. And when I pull up Task Manager, or let's say I run Brave, uh, all these things typically happen just as it would in bare metal. And the thing I always tell you when you first load up your VM, launch Task Manager, see what this looks like. Obviously, my CPU is a bit high. It's redlining sometimes when I'm launching things. Uh, and I would say, pay attention to this. That means maybe toss a couple more processors towards it. If your memory is at 100% or even over 50%, really, I would probably expand that. Uh, if your hard disk is constantly pegged at 100, well, you probably need to pass through another hard drive or uh, find a way to make your drive inside your computer faster. Let's say you're running a traditional spinning platter, maybe switch that to an NVMe or just add one and dedicate it for the VM. All these optimizations can be done to make a pleasant experience inside of here. And then you can just, let, let's say, let's push this to a different workspace. And then it can control everything. And you can see, hey, what's going on with this system? Uh, let's go to performance. Okay, there's my CPU usage. We could probably do a better job. And I've added a couple things in here I wanna go over to optimize this. But if you're like clicking stuff in your, you know, this is Vert Manager, uh, that's just a front end for QMU. But if you're not seeing like the CPU usage, and, other things. You're just not optimizing your system correctly. So let's go through a bare bones setup and start installing Windows on Linux. So the first thing we need to talk about is Windows 10 versus Windows 11. Windows 11 requires secure boot and UEFI. This can be kind of a pain to set up. Now you can bypass this with just a registry edit and that way you don't have to mess with anything. But anytime you create a new VM using Vert Manager, typically it does a legacy BIOS uh, setup. So that's just good to know. Uh, when doing Windows 10, you don't have any issues. Windows 11, you have to do some changes. Today, we're just going to install Windows 10. Uh, so let's go forward. Let's browse, look at our image directory, um, which I don't have anything in there. What's going on with that? We're just going to grab the Windows 10 ISO 64 bit. Now you might be thinking, why set up Windows 10 instead of Windows 11 when it comes to VMs? Uh, one, the ease of installation is quite a bit easier, but two, I like Windows 10 better than Windows 11 specifically for VMs because it just has a, a bit more tried and true track record and the updates aren't coming as fast as they are on Windows 11. Windows 11 still seeing a lot of feature releases. Windows 10's uh, getting put more on maintenance mode, which is kind of where I like to live, especially for like a secondary operating system because I'm not in it every day. Let's come back over here. We're gonna actually close this one and we'll relaunch our vert manager. Uh, we'll hit new, we're gonna go local media. Let's just make a new pool. We'll just call this downloads. Is my internet's fast enough now, I just, I really don't care. Uh, and we'll hit finish. So on downloads, we should see our new Windows 10 right here. 21H2 is what we're gonna install today. Detects Windows 10 forward. Now for this, I like to use about half of each. Obviously dedicating more than 10 gigs of memory, eh, it probably doesn't matter. So we're just gonna do 10 gigs of memory. We have 12 available. Typically I would like to do six or about half your CPUs, uh, however, I would honestly like to bump this up to eight for maximum performance. This is gonna make my host operating system a bit slower by doing more than half. Uh, so there's a little trade off here. So if you're gonna be living inside this, like you're not gonna be switching back and forth between your host and guest, you can probably go a little bit more than half. Uh, but if not, uh, I would stick to half. We'll, we'll go ahead and just do half just to see how it is. 
and then we create our storage. I typically don't like it creating my storage for me. I like to kind of manage that myself, create my own directory and say, you know what, I'm going to put it in this directory to create it uh, because putting in like the default, uh, it just gets kind of cumbersome depending on where you're at. This is spent on an old spinning platter, so it's going to be really slow, uh, which is fine. We're going to actually show you a really slow setup like most people get first. And then we're going to improve that. Uh, actually, I'm going to make this 50 gigs. We're going to hit finish. All right. We'll choose that volume and we'll hit forward. See, it puts it in my custom path. If you do just create disk, it's going to put it on your main root drive, uh, which in this case, it would be an NVMe instead of a spinning platter. So it would work a little faster, but still you'd run into some performance issues what we're about to see. Let's customize before install, hit finish. A couple things here uh, that's really interesting. We're going to change the video mode. We're going to add a guest agent in here and we'll probably swap out the disc as well. Running off a of QCOW 2 disc, you're going to see it's really laggy. It's just not a great experience. Uh, and we'll, we'll show that uh, conversion. So let's first with nothing, just begin the install, not doing anything. And then we'll come back and fix a lot of this. So we'll go full screen on this and we're just going to fly through our install here and see what we get. All right, the first install took roughly about five minutes, five to six minutes. For me, that's a bit long on Windows 10 on the, just the copying and installing features. Uh, so I'm curious to see what the reboot looks like when we come back in. We'll get our first peek at uh, this, this full install process. Now, this part, the getting set up, uh, I'm going to start timing that as well. It's right now about 16 after. Let's see what we get. Okay, finally, uh, seven minutes later, I think. So, man, this is this is quite a long install. Uh, we're we're almost official twelve minutes into since we hit start. So we're finally to this screen. I can tell already. I, I'm used to being almost completely done by about six or seven minutes. So this is already almost double the time to install Windows based on just doing it how everyone normally installs Windows on this type of setup. Let's get to the desktop and then I'm going to get a full, you know, clock count and put it up here. I will say those words are pretty scary. <laughs> While we work our magic, Microsoft working magic, that is a thing of nightmares. Okay, we got through this part of the setup. Did we? Still seeing these spinning dots. Ah, oh, finally. Yay. All right. Let's 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 move on here. Uh, let's just do an offline account. Uh, limit experience, please. Let's just call this crap user. Uh, next. No password because then you can skip all the security questions. We'll just accept everything and move on. Skip this BS. I will use my computer however I want and not tell you about it. Okay. Hi, are you going to get things ready for me? Oh, good. Uh. <laughs> oh, this is probably going to be another couple minutes. Hopefully not, though. Oh, my goodness. Finally, on the desktop, uh, about a full 15 minutes later after we started. Uh, that's a pretty bad install time. And... If we pull up uh, start menu, let's see. I clicked it. Click it. Man, such a long delay. What's our task manager doing? Let's show more details. I know it's just killing. Look at that disk. 100% usage on the disk. Oh, this is just brutal. Now we could optimize this, install some agents, make this look and feel a little better from here. But honestly, I like to just use and allocate an entire hard disk so we can see the time difference. So that's uh, the time it took to install with just no settings changed, how most people do it. But again, this is the wrong way. Now let's uh, let's shut this thing down and just do it the right way and see how long that takes. We're going to go win 10 and we're just going to delete this entire machine. Actually, you know what? I, I, I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> let's just delete Delete it. I don't want it on my system at all. This time around, we're going to do it different. 
and we're going to make it so much better. So we'll just do Windows 10. We'll do all the same settings. 10, 24, 0. Uh, let's do eight CPUs this time. Just give a little bit more horsepower on that CPU. Uh, this time, let's change our, or pick our hard drive to do. Uh, so it's going to, instead of creating like a QCOW2 file that it's going to read from, uh, and that's going to slow things down, I want to just dedicate some hard drive for it. Now, some people say do it in the customization afterwards, but I think we can do it right here. So how do we pick what hard drive we have? Uh, probably a bunch of different ways. You could do a pseudo BLK ID. If you have like really good labeling, if you have a ton of hard drives like me, I have like seven hard drives or something stupid. It's kind of hard to see what's up. Uh, another way, if you have like, this is the Thunar browser, you can kind of hover over and go, okay, that's SDE for Ventoy. Don't, don't write to that one. This is an NVMe E0 drive. SDC is a, a Windows drive. SDD looks like a different uh, Linux install. SDA, uh, don't know exactly what that is, but you could kind of correlate the two or kind of like the easier way, I think for many is just to do Gparted. Uh, Gparted has a really good way of like laying out what everything's going on in. So let's look through these. SDA, okay, that's a Windows partition. I think I'm using that for my Windows 11 VM. Uh, this one right here is my dual boot, or actually this is my current mount point of root. So that's the one I'm currently on. SD or NVMe E0. This looks like a dual boot. This is actually if I wasn't in Linux at all. Uh, let's go SDB. We haven't seen what that is. Uh, I don't know what this is. It looks like a Linux data partition of some sort with a bunch of EFI partitions, maybe used to boot or something like that. This is Win Data, huge three terabyte drive, SDD. Well, this doesn't look like anything. It's root ButterFS. I think we could use this whole 500 gig file and then SDE, you can see that's Ventoy. Kind of lays them out really good. Let's use uh, SDD for this one, uh, which you can see in the top right hand corner here. So let's come back here. And this time we're just gonna go uh, dev, SDD, uh, but you know what? Let's take SDD before and just kind of clean these things off. Uh, and let's just check that, apply. All right, cool. So this is just is a completely wide open drive to be used that we just cleared. And we're gonna get forward. We're gonna call this Windows 10. Uh, we're not gonna do any customization. Let's, let's do the same thing, but this time we've dedicated an entire drive for it. Now this isn't an NVMe drive, this is just a standard SSD. So like those old Samsung SSDs, should make this pretty easy. So let's hit finish. It is 11.11, some good luck. Let's see if we finish. I bet we finish around 11.20, but let's just see how fast we can install this on bare metal. So we're gonna hit install. We'll do Win 10 Pro, just like last time. And we'll do custom, select the whole drive, hit next. You can do custom partitions if you want. Now this uh, part of the process took about six minutes, I think last time. Let's see what it is right now. It's about 11, 12, 11, 13. Uh, and we'll see how long this takes. Okay, I can tell you already, that is quite a bit faster. We're about a little over a minute in, probably, probably about two minutes. So more than three times, probably around four times faster than doing it the other method. And this is just only one optimization using a bare metal drive. Uh, so you can see it's 11.14 right now. So three minutes in since we officially started. And now we'll see this, this whole part. I remember this getting ready just taking forever. Almost a full uh, six or seven minutes or something just ridiculous. All right, that took maybe 60 seconds. So that one was quite a bit faster, which makes sense because the ISO was still on our traditional file system and now we're putting it on there. So now it's working directly off that SSD and we can see all these things take uh, considerably faster. I'd say 10 times faster than the prior uh, way of doing it. And now we're already here. So we'll just fly through our basic setup. I remember the network still took a little bit longer right here. I remember this taking close to a minute or two. Let's see what happens. And I think this is actually 
pulling updates directly from the net. All right, there's that part done. Personal account, offline account, and limited experience. All right, we're gonna just keep this one. Just when I need to switch between Windows 10 and Windows 11, I needed this anyways. I'll run my tool, it'll disable all that junk anyways. And not now. So here we go. Now we get the final stage of the setup. We're officially about four minutes in now. I think we should have a final install time of about five minutes to the desktop. Uh, we started at 11.11, so probably six minutes. Of, I would say 11.17, 11.18 maybe, so still considerably better. There we go. We got the ding. 11.18 on this clock, 11.17. So roughly six minutes to the desktop. Uh, quite a bit better. Coming back into full screen, if we look at our task manager, you can see the disk is at 3% usage, which is fantastic. Memory, CPU, obviously we're using a lot more CPU now that that disk isn't the bottleneck. You can see that this is working so much better. We click the start menu, you get almost instant pop-up, which is great. Now it's still downloading all these apps and other garbage on initial startup. It's just one of those things. Now we can start to optimize this. Uh, now, before we start optimizing Windows inside, we need to optimize the outside and install some drivers. So when we come back to here, we could see, hey, on Windows 10, uh, we could add some other stuff, make that video look a little bit better, add some guest drivers. So this uh, just operates a lot better. So the first thing I like to do is come back into setting up uh, Windows inside this little guide, uh, putting the guest agent on, uh, and then obviously I talked about the pass through of the hard drive that we just did, but we could just come into Proxmox and look at these drivers. And usually it has like a little ISO. Uh, you can just download the latest stable ISO. This will grab it and put it in our downloads folder. And what we'll do is from here, we're gonna take this and just shut down this instance of Windows 10. Once it's not running anymore, we're gonna come into our SATA drive and then we're gonna change this out to our vert IOs that we just downloaded in, in here. And you see it right here, vert IO win, choose this volume, that's good, apply. And then we're gonna just start our VM back up. We'll see the start times here too. You can see it's 11.20 right now. Uh, to the desktop, I imagine being like, what? 15 seconds, 20 seconds, still not great, but uh, a, a considerable improvement over stock settings, of course. And now we come into our folders, come to this PC, we can see these vert IOs. And what we wanna do here is just run vert IO win guest tools, and we'll set this up. And this is gonna fix some of our device manager. So if we go into device manager, you can see some of these other things on this side, you'll uh, see these all disappear. We're just gonna take all the default ones and install all those drivers, just next, next, next. You see those disappear from our device manager. Spice client, this makes our display a bit snappier, a little bit smoother. You can see that smooth out as soon as that driver's installed. Now you can see the QXL controller. Uh, I like Vert IO just a bit better, but it, it does not matter. I mean, honestly, QXL is pretty good. We could probably leave that alone, but we're not gonna. We're gonna shut this thing back down and improve it even more by just coming into our information, come into our display down here. And we're just gonna change this to vert IO and put it right there. We're gonna also add a guest agent, which adds uh, basically communicates more from the Windows guest to the Linux host. So we're gonna just say channel, switch this to QMU guest agent, finish, and we're gonna start it back up. Now we could watch the startup. It's probably gonna be a little bit quicker, maybe. Yeah, it does seem a little snappier. Uh, could be the placebo effect as well. And you can see this guest agent, I'm just looking for the state connected right here. And we got that. So here's our desktop, let's full screen this. We have guest agent installed, we have the vert IO driver. Vert IO also gives better resolution. You can see we've already increased our resolution a bit, but we can change this to like a full 1080p. Uh, so it actually looks good. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks so much better. All right, great. So then we can start to optimize things and 
remove this. So let's take news and interest, turn off and search. We'll hide that. Nobody uses mail unless they're a complete peasant. And we're good. All right, sweet. And then we can start to de-bloat our full Windows install. I'll make a whole video on de-bloating that. But now you can see our usage. Our CPU's still pretty good. If we go to launch like Edge for the first time, I bet this takes a little bit to pop up, but still pretty, pretty darn snappy about what you could expect on just bare metal. That gives us a really good experience. We could even take this more, pass through a whole graphics card driver. Let's say we just wanted it for gaming. Uh, that's gonna be obviously its own separate video. I'm working on some other stuff with a PCI pass-through because I'm gonna be grabbing some mining cards. I've already bought one, as you can see over here. Um, that's going to be a fun one because those I got a 5700 XT for about 170 bucks, I think it was on eBay. Obviously, a mining card, uh, but those cards were going for like seven, eight hundred dollars like last year. So it's going to be fun. I'm going to be able to virtualize a bunch more. I specifically chose the 5700 XT. My people are like, why aren't you using NVIDIA? And that's because the 5700 XT, I could also do Mac using this method and pass through a GPU and change all my video editing to be all on my Linux box. So I'd have a fully accelerated, 3D accelerated Mac. I'd have a fully accelerated uh, Windows instance, and then I'd all be living in my Linux environment. Ah, oh, that'd be so cool. I could just get rid of so much stuff in the studio to have just really one box do it all. And that's kind of where I'm at. Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, did this help you with the virtualization? I hope this makes it to where you can use your Windows inside of Linux, not jump out a bunch. But with that, I'll see you in the next one.